This episode was made possible by Brilliant. Hi everyone, Jade here. If you read any article or watch any video about quantum mechanics, I challenge you to find one that doesn't mention the wave function. It's basically the bedrock of modern quantum mechanics. But it's a tricky subject and a lot of mystery still surrounds this elusive guy. In this video, I'm going to explain in plain English exactly what the wave function is, as well as answer the top three most voted questions to my post, what is something that you do not understand about the wave function? As this is quantum mechanics, you'll probably never be 100% not confused, but hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be slightly less confused. So what is the wave function exactly? Well, let's start with the word itself. Wave function. Wave function. As you probably know from high school, a function is a process that takes in a value and spits out a related value. For example, a very simple function is y equals x, where the output value is exactly the same as the input value. A slightly more complicated function is y equals x squared, where the output value is the square of the input value. The shape this function makes is called a parabola. Some functions describe real-world phenomena. For example, if you throw an object in the air, it'll trace out the path of an upside-down parabola. Just like this function describes the behavior of a thrown object, the wave function describes the behavior of a quantum particle. So what is this behavior like? Well, let's look at the other half of the word. Wave. The behavior of a quantum particle can always be described by a combination of our two favorite waves from high school, the sine wave and the cosine wave. We'll go into more detail on this in a bit, but for now, the wave function is a mathematical description of a quantum object, which takes the form of a wave. Let's look at an example. This is a standard university example of a wave function. It describes the behavior of a quantum particle, say an electron trapped in a box which can only move in one dimension. So what does this wave function mean? Like the parabola, does it trace out the path of the electron? No, it describes something totally different. The x-axis describes where the electron can be in space. But what about the y-axis? What does the value of the wave function here physically mean? Well, when we square the value of the wave function, for reasons I'll explain later, this gives us something called the probability amplitude. The probability amplitude can be thought of as a wave of probability. It describes the likelihood of finding the electron in a given place if we were to look for it there. The idea of a wave of probability is a bit hard to grasp, so let's imagine a more down-to-earth scenario. Imagine a jewel thief has just been let out of prison. She didn't learn anything from her time and immediately starts stealing from houses again. While they can't pinpoint her exact location, the police can assign probabilities to where she'll strike next. For example, knowing the kind of property she's targeted in the past, the police can guess that there's a higher probability she'll target the wealthier neighborhoods with their higher value jewels than the poorer ones. This can be thought of as a wave of probability. It's not tangible and it's not real, just a set of abstract numbers that can be assigned to various parts of the city. In a similar way, a wave function describes different probabilities to different locations of the box based on how likely it is we'll find our electron there. Now, what if the police manage to catch the thief red-handed? Immediately, their spread out probability distribution collapses to being a single point at one location and not anywhere else. Likewise, if the electron is detected in a certain location, its wave function instantly collapses to a point, and there is zero probability of finding it anywhere else. But here our analogy breaks down. The thief hasn't actually spread herself out across the city. In reality, she's only ever in one place at a time. The reason that the police can't pinpoint her location is because of lack of information, not because of an actual property about her. The electron, on the other hand, is very different. When we don't know its position, we can't assume it's in some definite place. It's not because of a lack of information that we can't pinpoint it. It's a fundamental property about quantum objects. Its position really is spread out like a wave, and it's only when we measure it does it collapse into a particle with a single location. As I mentioned earlier, when it comes to quantum mechanics, you will most likely never be at least not a little bit confused, but let's get back to our example. So the probability amplitude, the y-axis, 
describes the probability of finding our electron in a particular position. For example, there's a high probability we'll find our electron here, a low probability we'll find it here, and a zero probability we'll find it here. Here's what some other wave functions look like, and the exact same rules apply. When we square it, we get the probability distribution of where the electron is likely to be when we measure it. Now about why it's squared. What I learned in university and what the classic textbook example is, is that the reason that we square it is because we don't want to end up with a negative probability. Why don't we want a negative probability? Because negative probabilities don't exist. There can't be a negative 40% chance that it'll rain tomorrow or a negative 4% chance you'll draw an ace. The lowest probability you can have is zero. When you square a negative number, it becomes a positive number. So that fixes that problem. So that's the wave function. Now, as promised, I'm going to answer three additional questions that were the most highly voted on my post, what is something you do not understand about the wave function? Zach Heilman asks, what's the connection between the wave function and wave particle duality? This is a great question. So wave particle duality is the phenomenon that quantum objects sometimes act like waves and sometimes like particles. We saw this in our box example, where before the position of the electron was measured, its probability was spread out like a wave. But then, as soon as we measured it, it collapsed into a particle. In other words, the probability of a particle being in a location is a wave, but the actual physical appearance of the particle is not. A famous example of this is the double slit experiment, where individual electrons hit the screen as particles, but added up, they make an interference pattern like a wave. The wave function simply describes this behavior. The probability amplitude, which is spread out like a wave, predicts where the electron will be measured as a particle. That's why when we fire many electrons at a screen, they make a typical wave interference pattern. So I hope that answered your question. Now for the next one. Mayang Bandare asks, why do we have it in the first place, especially if it's something that isn't real? This is a very common question, but it's not universally agreed that the wave function isn't real. Many people think that it is just a mathematical tool with no physical existence. But I think this table from Wikipedia sums up the state of affairs pretty well. We can see the different interpretations down the side and what they disagree about along the top. If we look at the real wave function column, we can see that it's indeed very disputed, and even two of the most popular theories of quantum mechanics, the Copenhagen interpretation and the many worlds interpretation, do not agree. I was pretty confused about this during my degree too. Interpretations of quantum physics weren't talked about very much, and more of the focus was on the math and solving the equation. Most textbooks just treat it as a mathematical tool, and the wave function collapse is seen more as the wave function equation changing rather than a real physical wave um, changing. This is all you really need to know for practical purposes, like figuring out the probability of where the electron is and solving the equation. Some quantum physicists go so far as to say that it's pointless to even ask the question of what the wave function really is. I'm not super into this answer because I think that conceptual understanding is really important, but at the moment we just simply don't know what it is. And hey, if it makes you feel better, even Schrodinger didn't know what his equation meant. He thought it represented electric charge. So to answer the question, why do we have it in the first place, even if we assume it's not real, it's incredibly useful for predicting the behavior of quantum objects. It's like our parabola. There isn't a real function in the air that the ball is rolling along, but this piece of mathematics describes the motion of this ball extremely well. Likewise, the wave function describes the behavior of quantum particles extremely well, so we can use it to predict things and create cool devices like quantum computers, transistors, lasers, smartphones, GPS, and more. And finally, I saved the best for last. Master Adit asks, how did Schrodinger derive the wave equation? Often seeing the inner workings and train of thought behind an equation can reveal a lot of the intuition, but if anything, this story reveals more about Schrodinger than his equation. So basically Schrodinger was asked to give a talk on de Broglie's idea that particles have wave-like properties. And after the talk, a professor in the audience named Peter Debye was like, hey Schrodinger, if particles can act like waves, there must be a wave equation. I want you to find it. And Schrodinger was like, okay. So he went to a secluded mountain cabin to work. 
Schrodinger was a polygamist and didn't take his wife, but was surrounded by beautiful young women. And in about two months, he'd produced four papers outlining the infamous wave equation. But what's interesting is if you look at the papers, there actually isn't a derivation. It kind of just jumps right to the equation. Nobel Prize winning physicist Richard Feynman said of him, When Schrodinger first wrote down his equation, he gave a kind of derivation based on some heuristic arguments and some brilliant intuitive guesses. Some of the arguments he used were even false, but that does not matter. The only important thing is that the ultimate equation gives a correct description of nature. He also said, where did we get that equation from? It's not possible to derive it from anything you know. It came out of the mind of Schrodinger. So I'm sorry to say that in this case, knowing the origins of the equation doesn't really shed much light on it. Schrodinger must have just had an incredible intuition and, uh, inspiration. I think this story goes really nicely with the reputation of quantum mechanics. So much mystery and intrigue surrounds the topic that it seems fitting that its main equation came from a man just as mysterious and intriguing. If you have any more questions, the best way to familiarize yourself with a topic is to work through problems and spend time forming an intuition. There's no way I could have gotten such a deep feel for quantum mechanics if I didn't solve a few wave functions at uni. But you don't need to do a physics degree to have a go. This sponsor's video, Brilliant, has an entire course dedicated to quantum mechanics for beginners. It starts out with the experiments that reveal the strange quantumness about the world, so absolutely no prior knowledge is required. The pictures make it much more accessible than a textbook, but the best thing about this course is that it asks you questions. Working out answers to problems is the only way you will ever get a deeper understanding of this weird and wonderful piece of physics. If you've ever wanted to teach yourself quantum physics, this is a great way to start. I find that doing the math behind the physics deepens my understanding of concepts I find hard to wrap my head around. And this course has an entire section dedicated to just the math of quantum physics. Brilliant has loads of other courses as well, specializing in math, physics, and computer science. If you know anyone who's interested in these areas but doesn't know how to start, a subscription to Brilliant would make a unique and thoughtful holiday gift. Brilliant is offering a 20% discount to the first 200 people to sign up using this link. Just go to brilliant.org slash upandatom. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching. Hopefully now you are slightly less confused. Please let me know in the comments if you found this video helpful. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons um, for supporting um, this channel. These videos would not be possible without you. Um, I probably won't see you until next year. This is my last video of the year. So I wish you a safe and happy holiday and I'll see you in 2020. Bye.